the Inuit people of northern Canada and Alaska believe that when they make a carving, the finished object is already inside the walrus tusk or the piece of stone that they're going to carve. And the carver has to kind of imagine where that object is inside the material, remove the outside material to free the object that was already there inside. And this is a really great way of thinking about drawing turned objects. So here we can draw a sideways on profile or an elevation view of a vase. This will be the, the lid of the vase. And then I'm going to draw these sort of bounding lines. So these will be two parallel lines going vertically. And then we can imagine that the vase will, the kind of the, the, the neck or the shoulder, let's call it the shoulder of the vase, will come out from the rim like that. And then we'll come down and so we actually maybe we'll give it a little bit of a, an inward curve there just to make it look a bit more interesting and then that will reach a point at the bottom where there will be another shoulder which will be the base of the vase now to create this in a three-dimensional representation then these two lines then become the outside walls of a sphere and we're going to kind of rotate this top up so that we can see what's going on. So next to this we're going to draw an ellipse with two lines coming down to create a cylinder. And then I'm going to draw the bottom ellipse in there so we can see it. It's a, it's a kind of three-dimensional representation of a cylinder. It's transparent and well, I'm going to put a line coming in here and just going dotted through there. So you can see that that is where, if it was on a lathe, it would spin around. And if you had a, a blade that was this profile here and you put it against it, it would cut that shape out of this spinning cylinder. So now this rim around the top of the vase is going to be this bit around here. And in fact, a vase is hollow, so it's a tube that's been shaped. Uh, so we can turn this into a tube. And we don't draw a great big um, ellipse in there. We just draw a little bit of the ellipse, and it just kind of fades out there. And we can put a bit of shading in there like that. And that will give us this effect of it being hollow inside. Then we want to put the shoulder onto the vase which is going to come out about there, like that, on each side. And the base here, the, 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 the diameter of that base is much narrower, so it's going to be about like that. And we can um, use the ellipse that we've already got, which is basically on the floor, standing on the table. We can use that as the guide to put a new ellipse in there. And it's going to be so high like that. So we can take that to about there. You've got this little curve coming out like that. This little curve coming out like that. And we basically kind of built our 3D model of the vase like that. There's the base at the bottom. And we can make it a little bit more realistic. And a little bit of shadow coming down there. Maybe a bit of shadow coming that way. And we could put a bit of a flower on the front there. Similarly, we can put a flower on the front here. And we might have a bit of wavy, wavy pattern like that. But here the wavy, wavy pattern won't be straight across. It will be kind of curving up slightly on either side. Because this whole thing is built up of concentric ellipses. As this is built up of rings, this is built up of ellipses. And so that straight pattern there will follow the curve of the ellipse. If you can draw a cylinder from any angle, then you can draw the vase from any angle too, by working it out within the cylinder. Now, as kind of homework, as a task, you can think about blocks. You know how to draw boxes and you know how to draw ellipses within the boxes. And you know then how to 
if that's at the bottom there then you know that's going to come down to fit the touch there and touch there and then that will come up to there because that will then be an ellipse in there at the bottom and this is how we create our cylinders out of box shapes and all this all this then would have to be removed on a lathe to create the cylinder and then from the cylinder you can create all sorts of interesting shapes <laughs> like a candlestick shape or something like that and if you look around your house your home then uh, i'm sure you will find all sorts of objects that are have been turned like this or you will find cups and mugs that have been raised by a potter on a wheel and have a look around at these various objects so maybe this would in fact be a mug <laughs> and the handles are always difficult to draw so but the, so the thickness of the mug you need to try and get that nice and thin will look something like that. You could try looking at objects from underneath. Um, maybe say a, a jam jar that I would call it. Maybe you might call it a jello, jelly jar. Anyway, um, you know, kind of a jar that you get jelly or jam in. And that's going to have a lid or honey jar. How about that? So that will have a lid. And this is kind of seeing it from underneath. Sometimes I have their little pop marks in the glass don't they and then these these kind of ellipse shapes it, that it would be built out of you can use those shapes there to work out where the label is going to go on the front of the jar like that and so just remember that these turn things are just full of ellipses and that in each drawing that you're doing the angle that you're looking at it then the ellipse is going to be sort of fatter or sort of more squashed, depending. So you could put honey on there. And again, you might want a bit of sort of shading in there to make that look a bit more realistic. And here again, you will want some shading maybe.